only test. Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Test, test, yeah. Test, test. How all you doing? What's up, what's up, what's up? Be hand tube in the house. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, first, before we get started, today I'm going to be doing the lesson revolution wrap up to go along with uh, the PowerPoint and the assignment sheet that you got. I see a lot of people are actually on right now. That's cool. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about grades. Okay, so I've been getting a ton of emails about how to submit extra credit, being that we can't meet in person and do our normal wheeling and dealing that, you know, I love to do. So uh, what we're going to have to do is the honor system. And the way the honor system works with extra credit means that whatever your grade is, uh, I will take your extra credit that I wrote down, right, and I have right over here, and I will apply it to your grades, which means I will be rounding up your grades to probably intervals of five, okay, uh, which means if you add a 97, which I know some of you are, 98, you'll be probably rounded up to 100 because I have your extra credit right down here. And I'm going to look through all the extra credit. Um, so I don't think there will be too much of an issue with grades. Uh, what I'm going to do is for the third marking period, I'm going to allow you to see what your grade point average is on Jupiter. And if you think that I did not apply the correct amount of extra credit to your grade when I do your grades, you can videotape or take a picture of your extra credits and send them to me uh, once you find out your grade for the third marking period. But uh, just remember, if I make a mistake and make your grade too high, and then I see that I didn't apply the right extra credit, I'll have to drop the grade down. So hopefully you get my gist, all right? Um, other thing, exit projects. So a lot of people are wondering when you're gonna get the questions back. My plan, is to have the questions back to you at the beginning of next week, which is April break. Now, April break is going to be looking different for everything that we're doing. I'm pretty sure you're gonna be doing some virtual field trips with uh, some of your classes. I don't know all the details right now, so I don't wanna speak on it too much, but I'm pretty sure that's the direction where we're going. So all the normal things that you've been submitting and doing is not gonna probably happen. Um, we are still going to be doing some type of instruction during spring break, but it's not going to be your regularly scheduled instruction that you used to. So just be on the lookout for that. And um, as far as the questions go, when you get the questions back, uh, I want you to understand that the exit project is probably going to be drastically different this year. Uh, you will not be doing a live presentation. I know some of you are probably clapping at the screen right now. Uh, you'll probably just be submitting a, a three-page research paper with ten slides to go around, go along with your um, with your paper. Ten slides to go along with your paper. So I really don't want you to stress out about the exit project. Okay? Are you are you hearing me? Do not stress out about the exit project. We will take care of it. Okay? There are other things to stress out about. My exit project, I don't want to be one of them. Okay, let's get into the lesson. I'm going to go through the lesson. This should take about 20 minutes or so. So, I mean, if you want, you can skip around. And the idea is that you can do the activities while I'm doing the lesson. And hopefully things that I'm saying will, will help you complete the activities. And you may want to pause the lesson um, to watch the video or listen to the song or do but you I mean once again you know how YouTube works so if you want to pause it you can okay so remember anything in yellow you're gonna write in your notebooks so I can check it um, let's look at the inquiry questions the revolution wrap-up normally 
this, these lessons would probably take two weeks in class and I'm about to do it in about 20 minutes. So I did have to take some stuff out, unfortunately, because you know, I do love teaching the American Revolution, but I did have to take some stuff out. So the inquiry question, how is the Continental Army able to overcome insurmountable odds to defeat England? Uh, the two words today are treaty, a formally concluded and ratified agreement uh, between countries. Ratified just means that two or, or two or more people agreed to it. That's what ratified means. So, or it basically means a majority agreed to it. Insurmountable, this is a good word, too great to defeat, too difficult to overcome. And uh, for many people, the British army was considered insurmountable. They, they were too strong, too skilled, um, too well equipped to uh, their military tactics were far better than the Americans. But somehow, some way, the ragtag group of American rebels were able to defeat these British. OK, and that's why we have a country today. That's good. OK, let's move on. So we, the last thing we talked about was the Declaration of Independence. So I do want to connect that lesson with this lesson. So after the Declaration of Independence was signed, we still needed to fight for our freedom. So a lot of people th thought or think still that the Declaration of Independence gave our freedom. But in actuality, the Declaration of Independence just stated that we wanted to be free. And England was like, OK, that's cool. You guys want to be free. but." Uh, you're going to have to fight us now. And that's what would eventually happen. But the Declaration of Independence was important because Washington would read the Declaration of Independence out loud to his men before battles. And you can see all the men lined up. OK, notice some of them don't even have, um, uh, you know, proper muskets. Some of them have spears and halberds. I don't know where this guy got a halberd, which is like a medieval... <laughs> pole arm, but I don't know where, he, okay, I don't know how accurate this is. Um, you know, the drummer boy here, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, and here's Washington on his horse, and he's reading out loud Declaration of Independence, the words that you guys watched uh, read out loud in John Adams, and you read. So my question to you, why do you think General Washington chose to do this? Why line up all of his men in a field before, you know, they're about to presumably fight to the death. OK, that's what war is. And read to them the words that Thomas Jefferson wrote down. What impact do you think it would have on his men during the battle? And what impact do you think it would have on his men before the battle? Those are really the two questions that I want you to answer on the answer sheet. Now, if you want to pause and go and write down your answer, that would be awesome. And if you could, could you put it in blue or purple color? Because my eyeballs are going to fall out um, from reading all the same things. So I need that blue or purple. I don't know. It's just a thing. OK, so you can pause, go to it, whatever you want to do. OK. Next slide is a See, Think, Wonder. I know you've been missing See, Think, Wonder tremendously, probably since you left school. So I wanted to make sure that you had a See, Think, Wonder to do while you're sitting at home. So. This painting, I love this painting, okay? I don't want to tell you too much about it, but it has a connection with the previous slide. But you'll notice that these people are not soldiers, okay? They're not soldiers, but they seem to be doing something, okay? I don't want to give away too much because I want this to be part of our YouTube lesson on Thursday. So. Analyze the painting by doing a see, think, wonder. I want you to do two things that you see. I'll give you one. Ready? A crowd of people are pulling down a man statue that appears to have a crown on. That's one. Okay. Uh, for the two things, why do you think they're doing this? What do you think is happening? Where do you think this took place? And the wonder is a question that you have about the painting. A question you have about the incident, a question you have about the event, you know how to do a see, think, wonder. So take a minute, look at the painting, a lot of interesting details, but the, um, you know, the main subject of the painting is what's happening to the statue in the middle. Okay. So I think, what do you think these people just heard? What do you think these people just heard? Okay. All right. Pause or moving forward.
after freeing Boston, let's now talk about Washington a little bit. So Washington is going to free Boston. He's going to get Boston back, which was seen as a tremendous victory. Remember, they they lined Boston with the cannons from Ticonderoga. Okay, I don't know if you remember from class. And they were able to get the city of Boston back from the British. Okay, uh, General Howe decided that he would um, retreat. He would leave Boston and he told Washington, I won't burn down the whole city if you let my men go without firing on them. And uh, Washington said, okay, that sounds like a good deal. We'll take the city. But unfortunately, after freeing Boston, Washington is feeling good. And then he loses eight of the next 10 battles. Crying meme. Yes, meme. Crying Jordan meme. Okay, so eight of the next 10 battles are losses. L's for the Continental Army, and which leads the Continental Congress to start looking for a replacement for Washington, stating he is not capable of winning battles. You know, can you imagine how history might be different if the Continental Congress did, in fact, replace Washington, um, especially when you find out who they were looking to replace him with? Uh, just as things seem to be getting, oh, we'll get to that in a minute. So um, this is the man that they wanted to replace him with, okay? I know he kind of looks like George Washington, but this is the guy who they wanted to replace him with. And if you don't know his picture, you probably know his name because he has one of the most infamous names in American history, Benedict Arnold. And when you tell someone that they're a Benedict Arnold, you're calling them a traitor because at this time, Arnold was on the short list of generals to replace Washington. Washington's Culper spy network would eventually discover that Arnold was, in fact, a traitor. Can you imagine what would have happened to history if the Continental Congress replaced Washington with Arnold, who they then found out was working with the British? Oh, man. Probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Okay. Uh, just as things seem to be at their worst, Washington's army gets stuck in the woods during the winter of Valley Forge. Okay. Now, this Valley Forge is one of the very interesting parts of the American Revolution. It's not a battle, per se, but what it is, it's like a battle of survival in the woods at Valley Forge. At this time, 1777, winter of 1777, the British have taken Philadelphia. So the whole Continental Congress had to move their whole operation. And George Washington has to stay in the woods outside of, uh, in Pennsylvania, outside, a little bit outside of Philadelphia. And they just happen to be hit with one of the worst winters on record. And things get really, really ugly. So what I want to do, I'm going to show you, um, you can watch this YouTube video. Hopefully the link works. And then you can complete the chart based on the video you found on the answer sheet. I'm going to show you the chart really quick, okay? So you know what to do. Hold on. So the chart, I should have had this up here. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is my son's. Hold on. Okay. Where is it? Right here. Internet slow. David did his work. That's good. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see, David. Okay. Um, so here is the chart. As you watch the video, you're going to see some problems at the winter encampment of Valley Forge. I listed three of them. Hold on. Men have no food to eat. That's a problem. In the solution box, you're going to write what the solution was to that problem. Okay. Uh, problem. Smallpox epidemic breaks out in camp. That's a problem, okay? And being that we're living during an epidemic, I think that that is pretty relevant. See what Washington did. What was his solution? Uh, men lack discipline and military tactics. That is a problem in a war. What was Washington's solution? Just write your answers in there in blue or purple. That'd be awesome. Okay. All righty. Valley Forge. So when you are done... Pause it now. Watch the video. If you already did watch the video, 
you will have seen that a man, Baron von Steuben, um, was one of the men who helped train <coughs> the soldiers in Washington's army. And uh, von Steuben was an ex-Prussian, which means German, military officer. Uh, many people think that he was removed from his service in the Prussian army because of his sexuality. He, he was a homosexual. And uh, I, I like this story because Washington basically says, uh, you know, I don't really care what your preferences are in men or women. You're a good soldier. That's what I care about. Come join my army. OK, which uh, I like that story because uh, the military, you know, they haven't been too kind uh, over the years to people like Baron von Steuben. But I wish they would look back in history and see how Washington treated um, Baron von Steuben. So he trains the men at Valley Forge and become skilled soldiers. In fact, uh, if you wanted to become a military officer today, you would be probably reading his uh, book which I don't, I don't remember the name. I think it's like Military Tactics of the Revolution at West Point. It's part of the curriculum at West Point, and it was written in 17, you know, 70, whatever. Uh, but he wasn't the only foreigner to help the American cause. And if you don't know Baron von Steuben, you probably know this next foreign person who would help the Americans win the war, okay? Enter the Marquis de Lafayette, okay? who this is how he looks in Hamilton, right? This is, what's his name, David Diggs? He does a good job. Actually, I think this, him playing Thomas Jefferson, he actually switches from the Marquis de Lafayette to Thomas Jefferson in the musical, but in real life, this is what he looks like, okay? So he looks a little bit different, but I was looking at this picture. Look at how, look how accurate, how accurate the, the costume is for, for this guy. Everything except for the epaulets, but... I was super impressed. I didn't realize that the uh, costumes of Hamilton were so accurate. Okay, we'll get more from that. So, the Marquis de Lafayette, you probably heard him if you know Hamilton. He is 19, so he's young. To you guys, that doesn't seem young, but to me, that is basically a baby. Uh, he's got lots of money and lots of influence. He comes from a very rich family. Uh, he loved the idea of American independence and would help convince the French to join the war. Uh, at the time, France was also ruled by a monarchy that people were not too thrilled about. So Marquis de Lafayette knew that if he helped Americans win independence from their monarchy in England, that maybe it would come around to France and they could overthrow their monarchy. And it just so happens in 1789, the uh, French Revolution happens, which is another huge event in history where the French do, in fact, overthrow their monarchy. He served as Major General in Washington's Army. If that seems familiar, Major General, that's because that is the same rank as Hamilton. And he's considered to be Washington's second right-hand man. And if you live in Brooklyn, you may actually see that represented on the map because there's Washington Avenue that goes straight through Brooklyn. And then on the right-hand side of Washington Avenue is Lafayette Avenue. Um, so that is a little representation of him being the right-hand man. We put a street next to his street. It's kind of cute, if you ask me. Okay, uh, this quote analysis. So this is your next thing to do on the answer sheet. Uh, this, this should, if you read the Declaration of Independence and did the Declaration of Independence lesson, this should be not too hard. When the government violates the people's rights, insurrection is, for the people and for each portion of the people, the most sacred of the rights and the most indispensable of duties. Okay. There's probably words in here you may not understand, but luckily you have a machine, hopefully, that can tell you what all these words mean. And the question that I'd be asking you is, what opinion do you think Thomas Jefferson would have on this quote? Not a very hard question, if you know a little bit about Thomas Jefferson. So uh, what do you think his opinion would be on the quote? What do you think he would say to the Marquis de Lafayette if uh, he heard him say this quote after writing the Declaration of Independence? Okay, pause, go do your thing, come back. Okay, France joining the war would bring something the Americans would sorely be missing, a Navy. The Americans, I think, had one ship at the time. I think one, that was the American Navy. They had one, so that's not going to work. 
being that England had the strongest navy at the time. Oh, and gunpowder bullets, guns, soldiers, supplies, medicine, money, experience. They brought all that stuff too. So I guess it was a whole lot. And but the navy would be important for the final battle. Okay. Picture of some boats. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Look, these are French. These are British, and they're firing their cannons at them. I wish I had a time machine. I would love to just sit in a little rowboat right here, right? And I would just want to watch this happen. It would probably be so crazy. So crazy. Okay. Sorry. All right. Battle of Yorktown. So the final battle of the revolution. Just getting on with it. 1781. Washington and French forces would surround the British army in Yorktown. Let's just look at the map real quick. I don't want to get too crazy on military history, but here's uh, General Cornwallis in here in the city of Yorktown in Virginia. Here are the French forces, Ro Ro Rochambeau, okay? Here's von Steuben, here's Lafayette, there's their forces right here. Washington headquarters, Rochambeau's headquarters. And then here is the French ships. So if you notice, Cornwallis and the British have nowhere to go. And you see these crooked ships? That's because we sunk them. All right. Uh, the French Navy would cut off their escape and ability to resupply. So the British ships couldn't come in to the, you know, this port here of the James River. But more importantly, so the supplies couldn't come in or reinforcements couldn't come in. More importantly, Cornwallis, he couldn't get out. So he's stuck. He's stuck in between uh, the French, Americans, uh, and the French Navy. So Cornwallis has no. He's got no no choice. He surrenders to Washington on October 19, 1781. And let me just get to this here. So this is Washington accepting Cornwallis's surrender. You see the American flag here, and you see the white flag of the British here. And it's famously said that when Washington came to accept Cornwallis's uh, surrender, Cornwallis sent his aide out with his sword. I was like, yeah, hey, here's the sword, here's the sword. And Washington was like, no, 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 you tell Cornwallis, get out here, get out here, bring the sword, you bring the sword to myself. So this is Washington and Cornwallis walking through the, um, you know, the lines of men. And, you know, I'm sure you're wondering, well, why didn't all these guys just kill all these guys? Because that's why, that's what I'm asked in class all the time. So I'm just imagining these guys should have just killed all these guys. Washington said, listen, you retreat. I will let you keep your guns. I will let you um, actually march under the your flag, but uh, you got to go. And that's it. And as they were marching out of Yorktown, the band, not the band, this is not a full band, okay, uh, the drum and fife players, you go back to the, the drummer, and then that guy, the fife player, they're going to play a famous song called The World Turned Upside Down. And the question I think some people are confused by on the answer sheet the question says, why, just based on the title of the song, The World Turned Upside Down, why do you think the band, I'm sorry, the Drum and Fife Corps of the British Army would be playing this song as they left Yorktown, as they were retreating from Yorktown, after they were defeated by the American soldiers who basically defeated the undefeatable force, which was the British? So why do you think this song was played. It's good. You don't even know have to know what the song sounds like. Just look at the title. Okay. Oh, there they are. That's them. Fife, drum. Okay. Uh, you ask why do they have drummer? Why do they have drums? Why do they have drums back then? What What are they doing? That we well, you can't drum someone to death. Okay. Uh, at least I don't think so. Um, but uh, no. Basically, this was this was before they had radios. This was before they had walkie talkies. You couldn't shout, hey, left flank, move to the right, or left flank, right flank, move to the left, or this, that, and the other thing. So what they did was they had drummers communicating different patterns on the drums. They had them communicating different orders so that you could hear a drum over a human voice, okay? So let's watch this. Why do you think the British would play the song the world turned upside down? And this is, oops, sorry. I want you to watch this. This is a, um, a performance from the Hamilton cast doing their song, The World Turned Upside Down. Just to clear up any confusion, this is not the song that they were doing uh, 
during the Battle of Yorktown because that would be pretty strange if uh, you know they they came out rapping with with beats. Uh, you know, it'd be pretty strange if that happened in 1781. But this is uh, Lin Manuel Miranda's interpretation of the Battle of Yorktown, and I like it, and you should watch it. Okay, on September 3rd, 1781. The Treaty of Paris is negotiated by John Adams, Ben Franklin, and John Jay. What's up, John Jay? In Paris, France. <clears throat> the treaty officially recognized the United States of America as a free and sovereign country. So it was... I'm sorry, this is wrong. This is wrong date. My bad. Then, I guess. See? I do these live. These are live YouTubes. There we go. Sorry. I'm ashamed of myself. Okay, the treaty officially recognized the United States as, of America as a free and sovereign country. Okay, here is the British guys. I think this is a guy named Lord North. Okay, Franklin, Adams, John Jay, and they sign. You see these little red things on the treaty? That's right there in real life. Everyone's like, what's with the blood stains? Okay, not blood stains. What that is, let me explain, is that each guy had a what they call insignia ring which if you're john adams you have a special ring and then when you want to sign something official you stamp the ring in some hot wax and it makes a special symbol for john adams so everyone's like oh that's john adams only john adams has that ring that's what that uh rose thing is blood stains whatever you want to call it okay so the treaty of paris is where we do finally get our um where we do finally get our recognition or recognition recognition sorry uh recognition as a free and independent sovereign country make our own laws make our own treaties make our own commerce everything that franklin uh sorry jefferson i'm losing it that jefferson said in the declaration let's watch this video together this is king george's reaction according to lynn manuel miranda i like this so we'll listen to it together and you guys should recognize the song but with different lyrics you'll dig this. Here we go. We're going to watch it. They're going to make us watch a commercial. As a matter of fact, for what it's worth, Grammarly can. Yeah, that's long. Let me mute you. Okay. While we're waiting for the commercial, hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing good over here. You say I went on a bike ride? It's great. Beautiful. Weather's going to start getting nicer, so I know it's going to be hard, but we got to try and stay away from each other for another two weeks. And I think after the next two weeks, I think we're going to be out of this. But I don't I don't know. But hopefully. They say the price of my war is not a price that they're willing to pay. Insane. You cheat with the French. Now I'm fighting with France and with Spain. I'm so blue. I thought that we made an arrangement when you went away. You were mine to subdue. Well, even despite our estrangement, I've got a small query for you. What comes next? You've been freed. Do you know how hard it is to lead? You're on your own. Awesome. Wow. Do you have a clue what happens now? Oceans rise. Empires fall. It's much harder when it's all your call. All alone. Across the sea. When your people say they hate you. Don't come crawling back to me. Da 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 Stop listening. You probably stopped listening a while ago. But if you're still here, okay. Um, so this is going to help answer the inquiry question if my lesson didn't already help you. So this is a short constructive response. You please, please, just two 
very short paragraphs. I can't read them all. Okay, please. Very short, right to the point. This link that you see, the History Junkie, Eight Reasons Americans Won Revolutionary War. This link includes eight reasons the Americans were able to defeat the British. Please choose two reasons that you feel were the most important to America's success in the war. Explain why you chose these two reasons you did over the other reasons listed. Okay, um, so there you go, guys. That's it. Um, I hope you're having a good uh, quarantine. Uh, I think I'm I'm settling in nicely. I would still rather be at work. It's a lot of work doing all this and working with my kids, and I'm sure your parents feel the same way. But uh, as long as as long as you're safe, and as long as we know that the uh, light of the tunnel is approaching, it's coming. Okay, I can feel it. The uh, confirmed cases evened out um, in New York City, uh, so that's good. And I, I hope all your families are okay, and I hope your families are safe, and you're safe, and, and you're happy. Okay? All right. T-Hand out. See you guys. Miss you.